Hi everyone. Now we are going to discuss about cholera which is one of the type of food and waterborne diseases. Cholera is caused by a bacterium called Vibrio cholerae bacteria belonging to the family Vibrionaceae and in Greek chol means bile and this cholera disease causing bacteria was first isolated by Mr. Robert Koch in the year 1883 and this cholera is going to produce a toxin which can cause profuse water diarrhea and vomiting and even death due to the dehydration if left untreated and these bacteria are going to be transmitted mainly through the contaminated water and contaminated food by the fecal matter and the cholera disease is going to be considered as both epidemic as well as the endemic disease now coming to the causative agent that is vibrio cholerae the vibrio cholerae is a short curved or comma shaped bacteria and is a gram negative rod shaped one that is basal like where on gram staining it is going to appear pink color that's why it's a gram negative with a rounded or pointed ends of about 1.5 micrometers into 0.2 that is width is going to be of 0.2 to 4 micrometers in size and it is actively motile with a single polar basilla so which can also be considered as monotrichus the motility is of a darting type in N cultures and the acute cholera stools the vibrio shows a swarm of gnats movement they are non sporing non capsulated and non acid fast then coming to the cultural characters vibrio cholera is strongly aerobic that means they are going to grow only in the presence of oxygen the optimum temperature is 37 degrees centigrade and the pH is going to be of 6.4 to 9.6 which favors the better growth though the optimum pH is 8.2 and the NaCl concentration is going to be of 0.5 to 1 percent beyond this one that means if the concentration is going to exceed more than 5 percent this cholera is going to be that means vibrio cholera cannot grow in the laboratory media and it is quite sensitive to drying exposure to sunlight and extreme changes in the pH that means they cannot withstand at these conditions and not only that our normal intestinal flora will also inhibit the growth of this vibrio cholera bacteria and coming to the medias in which they grow and how they grow it grows well on ordinary media like nutrient media so here you can see how the vibrio cholera bacteria is present on the nutrient agar okay so where uh, after the overnight uh, growth the developed colonies are going to be appear as moist tra transluent and then round and disc shape and measures about 1.2 to uh, millimeters in diameter and with a bluish tinge is transmitted light and then moving to the macronchi you can see here the colorless colonies as these are non lactose fermenters but on prolonged incubation due to the late fermentation of the loop, uh, lactose they can appear as a reddish one on the media then coming to the blood agar colonies are going to be surrounded by uh, a, what we call it as a green zone but you can see here the clear zone of the heme digestion okay so that means beta hemolysis is going to occur and then coming to the transport media the best transport mediums are going to be a Venkat Raman Ramakrishnan medium and clary berry medium so here is an example which is mainly used for the purpose of transporting the samples from the location of uh, this epidemic and endemic conditions to the laboratories then moving to the selective media the best selective media for the growth of this vibrio cholera bacterium is TCBS medium in short and the full form of TCBS medium is thiosulfate citrate bile and sucrose medium so this is the medium which is green in color and if it is a vibrio cholera bacteria this is how they are going to look like after its incubation in this medium and along with this we are also having enrichment media as well as the plating media enrichment media alkaline peptone water and tarcolate peptone water or the enrichment media then coming to the plating media alkaline bile salt agar medium monsters gelatin tarcolate triplicase telluride agar medium so these are the main two plating medias which can be used to culture this vibrio color 
okay so these are all the several types of the medias in which we are going to grow them then moving to the epidemiology cholera is exclusively human disease that means there is no animal reservoirs until now we don't have the known animal reservoir of this transmission of this disease and it is mainly transmitted by contaminated water and food with the fecal matter infection originates from the patient or the carrier and outbreaks have been associated mainly with raw or uncooked seafood harvested from contaminated waters then moving to the pathogenesis and clinical features the vibrios enter orally through the contaminated water or food following ingestion vibrio cholera infects the small intestine multiply rapidly so here is a small intestine this is a large and here it is so here it is going to multiply rapidly and it is going to release an antidote toxin known as cholerogen or cholera toxin and this toxin is a protein which can penetrate into the intestinal wall of a small intestinal wall and obviously what happens once it enters the toxin prevents the absorption of water by the intestine leading to hypovolemic shock and dehydration the full blown cholera is characterized by massive loss of fluids and electrolytes from the body and after an incubation period ranging from hours to few days profuse watery diarrhea that is rice watery stools and vomiting begins so here you can see this is a sample of the rice watery stools the outpouring of bicarbonate rich isotonic electrolyte solution leads to decrease in extracellular fluid volume then heme concentration that means your blood is getting concentrated then hypokalemia base defect acidiosis and shock and the common complication that we are coming to have is muscular cramps renal failure pulmonary edema cardiac arrhythmias and paralytic ileus if the patient is untreated the death from severe dehydration causing hypovolemic shock may occurs in hours to days then moving to the laboratory diagnosis specimens collected are feces and rectal swabs feces is best collected by introducing a rubber catheter uh, into the rectum and letting the liquid stool flow directly into the sterile container so you will take a container and a tube is connected to it and which was injected into the rectum the specimens are preserved in appropriate holding medium that is our transport medium that is vr medium or carry player medium and then transported to the laboratory and microscopy is the best one to identify for rapid diagnosis that is characterized darting modality of vibrio cholera in hanging job preparations and its inhibition by specific anti serum can be demonstrated under the dark field microscope or the phase contrast microscope using the cholera stool for uh, acute cases or more reliably after enrichment for 6 hours and bacteria can be directly identified by direct immunofluorescence in the stools so these are all the laboratory diagnoses by which we can identify and even we can perform the cultural characters also to confirm the cholera then prophylaxis prevention is better than cure so obviously prevention relies primarily on public health measures that reduce fecal contamination of water supplies and food so what we have to do use only clean sterilized water for drinking purpose and for application purpose avoid insect contamination of clean food then good sanitation conditions adequate cooking of foods can minimize the transmission we learned that this cholera bacterium is sensed due to uh, drying as well as for heat so obviously adequate cooking can also minimize the transmission vaccination is the best widely used method of prevention in endemic areas so in use we are having the three types of uh, cholera vaccines those are all killed cholera vaccine then we are going to have a, a killed oral b subunit vaccine and live oral vaccine this killed cholera vaccine uh, is going to be of a suspension containing 8000 million vibrio cholera per ml and the concentration of the vaccine may be increased to 12000 million cells per ml in order to 
improve the antigenic stimulus and the vaccine is going to be given intramuscularly or subcutaneously in two doses within 1 to 4 weeks intervals and coming to the second one killed oral b subunit or whole cell vaccine the vaccine contains cholera toxin b subunit of about 2.5 into 10 to the power of 10 which is was heat kill vibrios and equal number formalin kill vibrios okay so here we are going to take heat kill vibrios as well as a formalin kill vibrios also and making the preparation of this killed oral b subunit that's why we call it as a kill oral b subunit whole cell vaccine so whole cell means you are going to kill it and as well as you are going to have the formalin uh, red killed vibrios then coming to the live oral vaccine the live oral vaccine is a recombinant dna vaccine which expression of vibrio cholera one is attenuated strain of salmonella type b 21 as a carrier bacterium has been developed and the live salmonella colonize the paste patches of small intestine and induce iga that is immunoglobulin a response by local immunity now this live attenuated oral vaccine against whip cholera is also available so we can have any of this type of cholera vaccines to prevent this cholera disease with this we have finished off all the things that we should discuss in about the cholera okay so that's all about the cholera thank you